What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and testing negative for those viruses. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Virus Update for Thursday, July 24th, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. Let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. And you need to be informed of what's going on with these viruses. That's what I do here on my channel each and every day to help keep you safe and informed. I give you the latest news, data, and anything I can find. And let me tell you, I found a lot of things today. So get ready. There's going to be quite a few things that you see in this video to inform you. If you want to stay informed, subscribe down below. I do these videos almost every day. Very rare do I ever miss a day of doing these videos. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And leave your comments down below. All right, quick note. We are recording today's video early. It's going to be released much later in the day. The time of day you're seeing it is after 2 p.m. So we will not be getting to the UK. We will not get to the New uh, York update for today or Ohio. Trust me, there's more than enough stuff to fill up this video today. And we'll get to that stuff tomorrow. Starting off with this. This is from NBC News. Summer COVID cases are rising across the U.S. And then they say, is it time for a vaccine? Well, let me tell you something. First off, with the way things are progressing right now in the political world, uh, doesn't look like there may be a new vaccine. Hard to say. We, there is no clear picture as to is there going to be a booster for the fall, as is we just saw uh booster shots get removed from the vaccine schedule for kids yes i've been seeing and uh a video circulating about rfk hhs secretary and uh so yeah as for the rising covid cases this is a big problem and they do talk about uh nb.1.8.1 variant but uh xfg which uh, they don't really mention here is also a problem and with our data being so sketchy we're not getting updates from the cdc nowcast at this time which means we don't know how far advanced we are they still show the nb.1.8.1 variant dominating but again one would have to think at this point xfg may be right up there or perhaps even ahead of the nb.1.8.1 hopefully we will get a variant update tomorrow we have not had one in several weeks uh i'm not keeping my hopes up uh because i don't want to get my hopes up saying oh we're gonna get a variant update tomorrow and then find out we don't we'll just have to wait and see what happens i i mean hopefully we do get one but uh the odds of it happening are not so great because there's simply just not enough data to find out what's going on. Now, they also talk about how NB.1.8.1 is an offshoot of the XVD.1.5.1 strain. Okay, everything here just all goes back to Omicron. That's where this comes from. Remember the BA.1 back in 2021? It all eventually somehow traces back that there are people out there that are experts in that category. All right, moving on to this. Uh, country music star Luke Bryan, who stopped touring for nearly a month due to a mystery illness, told the audience this. Yeah, remember, I included it in one of the updates. Luke Bryan had, uh, at least I think I did. I know it made my uh, list of performers who were sick in 2025, but uh, he had a mystery illness at the time. Well, guess what? Guess what that mystery illness was? Ha ha. If you thought COVID, you'd be correct. He put, I got COVID. You can all boo that blank. We won't say that word on here. All you want. But I got it. I had to cancel some shows and now I'm back, but I'm not 100% because it's still kicking my blank. Or we'll just say alpha. You get the idea here. He had it. And well, a month later, he is still sick, which, as you know, if it's a month later, it signals perhaps maybe he is dealing with long COVID. Yikes, this is not good. And this just goes to show you, we see a lot of performers cancel for illness or mystery illness, sports players with illness or mystery illness. It just shows, yeah, that can, even in 2025, still be COVID. 
So, yeah, this is uh, not a good thing. We're going to continue to follow this to see if there are any more updates, to see if anything goes wrong during one of his shows, uh, because not good. He's still not himself. All right, moving on now to New South Wales. This is from Dennis, the COVID info guy. That last post was from Jammer. There will be a thread. I'm going to post it tonight, not today. Uh, there will be a thread tonight of all of the uh, news stories used in today's update, if not tomorrow morning. I will get to it at some point. Tonight, tonight of course, is today, but it's going to be late when it comes out. So here we go. That is the COVID info guy. New South Wales respiratory surveillance reports, week ending July 19th, 2025. Respiratory activity has likely declined due to the school holidays. So apparently they're having holidays there now. And COVID positivity rate. 5.9% down by 0.5% or half a percent. COVID, uh, 2,369 new cases down by 9.8%. Influenza, 8,084 new cases down by 5.6%. RSV, 1,972 new cases down by 10.6%. And it looks like sequencing shows the NB.1.8.1 variant is at 84% up to June 28th. KV.3 is still 5% LP. 0.8.1, still 4%, XEC, 3%, JM.1, just 1%, and 3% makes up the other variants. And you can see here that for the majority, three out of the four regions in New South Wales are dropping out at this time. Only one region is rising. All right, moving on, we have a lot more things to look at. Taking a look at this, in the Republic of Ireland, weekly confirmed COVID hospitalizations in the Republic of Ireland, and take a look at this. Yep, look at the chart. They are going upward at this time. That's not a good thing. It's a growing trend in many countries at this time. All right, moving on to this in Canada. Masking is once again required at Icaluit Hospital due to, no, not COVID, a whooping cough outbreak. Yes, they are dealing with a whooping cough outbreak at this time. The department wrote that the measure is to protect the vulnerable people and to prevent the spread of the illness because the illness is growing and they did declare an outbreak of this on Monday. So, yep, whooping cough is a problem there, but it doesn't stop there. Here in the United States, in the state of North Carolina, officials say that cases have increased once again in Haywood County. We have been following this outbreak for better part about a week or two now. And health officials in Haywood County have confirmed an additional case of whooping cough, bringing the total number of active cases. These are currently active cases to nine. Among the confirmed cases is one is an adult and the rest are children and teens under 19 years old. All right, moving on to this. Four more states announce more measles cases. At least so this article says. There's actually another one we'll get to in a moment. Amid ongoing record post-elimination measles activity in the United States, four states have reported more measles cases, including Colorado, Iowa, New Mexico, and Wyoming. Meanwhile, in its weekly update, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention added 10 more cases to the national total, which now has reached 1,319 cases. And uh, before we get to that update, there is also this. This probably came in after that, I assume. I don't know. Health officials confirmed two more measles cases in Kent County, Michigan. That's right. So uh, two more cases in Kent County, Michigan. Also, there is this. This is from the uh, CDC. And we can see that weekly update from the CDC on measles. And it shows 1,319 new cases. But what I want you to see is, uh, let's see here. Do we have that? There it is. Vaccination status. 92% are unvaccinated or unknown. It's the majority, but again, that number slipped a little bit. Uh, one MMR dose, 4%. Two MMR dose is also at 4%. So uh, 8% have had at least a little bit of vaccine now. That's slightly concerning. But still, the majority are unknown status or unvaccinated. And uh, 13% of the cases have been hospitalized, 165 of 1,319. All right, moving on. Would you believe it? We still have more news. All right, in Tennessee, uh, yeah, this, and this may cause me to have a reaction. Tennessee is forcing children to go to work sick 
it should say go to school, well, school, work, hey, teachers as well, even if they have a doctor's note in order to boost attendance scores. This is totally ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous whatsoever. Rather than address an issue, they're just going to force them to go to school while sick. Well, let me show you something. And here's my reaction. I present to you the COVID in kids sec studies section on my website. I just added one this morning. Now, mind you, there's preschool, there's daycare, right on up to high school. Infants and preschoolers show unique signs of long COVID. A study post-COVID symptoms in children, a cross-sectional survey. There's a lot of different things here. Severe forms of COVID-19 infection in children may increase cardiovascular disease risk. Remember that one recently? Long COVID linked to raising anxiety and depression in children. I mean, on and on I could go. Virtually all children infected with COVID-19 show signs of blood vessel damage, study shows. I mean, it just goes on and on. Young children are more likely to be hospitalized for COVID-19 than older kids. Increased emergency department visits for children with long uh, COVID. Long COVID rates in kids revised upwards. On and on I could go. I won't. You get the point here? Yeah. Infecting kids with COVID is not a good thing. Why don't we try and prevent kids from being infected? I get it. We need attendance to, attendance to go up in school. But let me uh, pause and tell you something. Sending them to school while sick, infecting other kids who may be high risk or who may go on to develop long COVID, that's not a good thing. And if they do go on to develop long COVID, their ability to learn is going to decline sharply. There are studies that show that as well. So this whole idea of, oh, we got to get the attendance up and just send them to school while they're sick. We, we just got to do something. They're just gasping at straws, coming up with a solution that's not a good one. It's just totally, totally unacceptable and ridiculous. And to be honest with you, I don't know what the accurate solution is, but uh, sending kids to school sick is not one. Heck, at this point, what are we going to do? Send teachers to school sick? It's already happening. It is. Uh, something needs to be done. And yeah, sending kids to school sick is just not the answer whatsoever, whether it be COVID or some other disease. We're also learning now that there could be long flu. All right, moving on to this in New York. Uh, another reason why we can't trust the data anymore because, well, we just slowly take away the data. And in this case, we take away testing. City closes final rapid testing site, alarming residents. And yes, it does mention New York. The city has shut down its last rapid COVID-19 testing site despite community efforts to keep it open, leaving New Yorkers without an easy way to find free PCR testing amid recent rises in coronavirus diagnosis. And yeah, COVID cases, they are starting to go up there. Later today, there will be an update which includes New York City for New York State. We'll get that to that in tomorrow's virus update. But yeah, this is... Um, I mean, come on. It's hard for people to get tested, and you're going to make it even harder. That's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's just total nonsense. We should have more testing right now, but uh, guess what? If we had more testing, oh, look at all these cases. Oh, we can't have that. We already told the people that COVID's over. No, COVID's not over. It's very much still alive. We're in the middle of a summer wave. Please stop taking away testing. All right, take a look at this air quality today. Yeah, this is also not good. I don't have any good news today. I'm just bad, full of bad news today. Take a look at this. You can see Ontario, Alberta, many portions of Canada, wildfires. They are spreading the smoke into the United States. Look at the East Coast is having problems. Uh, that's starting to come into New England today. Uh, I'm going down to visit Portland today. Don't worry, I'll be masked. I may even post a masked selfie of me on X. Um, there's been a lot of them lately, people posting masks. Southeast is new. I, I'm very tired, but still I resist. Thing maybe I'll take part in that today. I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna have to be careful because the air qualities are not great today. And uh, we can see here the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, problems up there as well. Uh, portions of the Southwest, a few orange areas. Utah, Colorado. What's going on with your air quality today? That is not good. All right, let's take up EMS calls, shall we? We can see there are a few right now ongoing in Pinellas County, Florida. Taking a look to see if Philadelphia came in yet. They may not have. Sometimes 
they do come in late. Other times they come in the 7 a.m. hour. Uh, we'll see if yesterday's total is in yet. I'm thinking it may not be, but uh, let's see what we find. Yeah, it's still showing up for Tuesday at this time. They're not showing the Wednesday numbers. I'm going to refresh it again, and let's see here. Yeah, today they're just late. Okay, taking a live look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and this is for today's date. Yes, it is, and we do currently have 11 uh, calls ongoing there. Cardiac arrest in Montgomery Township, stroke in Limerick Township, two calls that are not good. Taking a look at what's going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and if you saw yesterday's update, a lot of people didn't. That's okay. If you saw yesterday's update, you saw that there were a lot of sick person calls, and already there are two of them there right now. Respiratory emergency call, and a respiratory emergency could be common today with those bad air qualities down there. Taking a look at what's going on in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and I do need to refresh this because this is a piece that does not refresh on its own. Sometimes Chester County, Pennsylvania does not either. And uh, let's see what's going on there. Then we are going to take a look at some numbers from CJS. And I think that will be it for today's video. Not going to include any way. I was going to include some wastewater, but I'm not. Oh, actually, we do have one other thing. Uh, let's take a look here. EMS uh, calls. Yeah, there's nine of them right now. Just sick of whole episode. I see nausea, back pain. Yeah, uh, just a whole bunch of different things. Here's that one other thing. We have data from Colorado. I get this to load. I had it up earlier. I wonder what happened. It, I, I'm telling you, here, I can tell you. Uh, here we go. I see the positivity rate for COVID, 6.15%. That's down slightly. Influenza went up ever so slightly, like just a, not even a quarter of a percent. RSV, the positivity rate is just a quarter of a percent. And both of them, influenza and RSV, positivity rates are over, under 1%, which is very good information. Hospital count, 32 for COVID, 3 for influenza, 1 for RSV. Emergency department visits diagnosed for these viruses are very low at this time. Zero for RSV at this time. That is some really good uh, news. 11 out of 20 utilities, wastewater facilities for COVID are increasing in Colorado at this time. Alrighty, let's end today with some new numbers from CJS. This was for the virus update today, Thursday, July 24th. And there are some Tuesday and Wednesday numbers. First off, Tuesday, a daily number. Get this, Florida, 3,001 new cases, likely including a case dump from earlier this year, and three new deaths. Though one of them were, no, though none of them were from this year. Figure that out. They're constantly finding deaths from previous years that say, oh, things were still bad. It's unbelievable. New York, daily cases on Tuesday were 333. Puerto Rico, Yikes, 814 new cases. Maryland, 627 new cases and three new deaths. Virginia, weekly number, 1,180 new positive tests and eight deaths reported by the CDC data tracker last Friday. Uh, cases there are on the rise. That's a weekly number. Florida, daily, 1,079 new cases and seven new deaths. You see how that's lower than Tuesday. That shows you that Tuesday was likely a uh, dump. And uh, New York, 349 new cases on Wednesday. Puerto Rico, another 737 new cases. Nevada, 249 new cases. And Washington, a weekly number, 401 emergency department visits and six new deaths. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the virus update. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Let's uh, try for 150 to 175 like button hits today. Haven't had that happen in a while. And of course, uh, Subscribe if you're new down below, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below, and remember to hit that notification bell. And of course, ways to support the channel are listed down below. Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, YouTube keeps sending me no notifications saying I can have a members section on here. I don't know if I want to ever go that route, but if I did, would you become a member? And here's what I would do with that. Uh, like days like today where I'm pre-doing uh, a video. I would put it out earlier for people who are members and then would set it to uh, release to the public later in the day or if it's a day in advance video. Would you want something like that? Let me know down below. If you would, uh, I can set up that members section and we can do that. I don't know. It's just a thought because they constantly keep uh, t telling me that I can do that. Alrighty, folks. I will see you again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Thursday afternoon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.